Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Now in this video, I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to use Virtual Joy inside of your project. Um, so basically, once you've imported it, you'll receive a Virtual Joy folder in your sprites, which contains eight themes for you to use. You'll also receive a Virtual Joy folder and a Virtual Joy demo folder, and also this room test, which will also be inside of a Virtual Joy demo folder when the product is completed. Now, Virtual Joy comes with eight themes. Uh, the themes are very easy to make. It's simply two sprites, the outer sprite and the inner sprite. And you can customize these. They can be any size that you'd like, um, any color, any shape, and it will automatically work out and calculate for you the radius of your joystick and the positioning of the inner joystick as well. So you can pretty much use any image. Uh, I know there's a pack for Unity, I think it's about $10 and it comes with 180 different themes. And as you can see, it's extremely easy to create your own themes. The next thing is the actual Virtual Joy object. Uh, if we open up, this is the base object. And inside of its create event, you'll see we have a dead zone and a display set GUI size command. Now in this command here, this is the only important command. You have to set that to the size of your window. And the reason for that is that it will automatically adjust and display itself in the right position with that set. We also have customizable dead zone on the joysticks and I'm going to leave that one for now so I can show you how that works in a second. Um, and to use them in the room, you simply place down an object, an instance of each of them that you create. Um, so the instances I've created are object left stick and object right stick. Uh, these could be named anything. Uh, to change the theme, you simply change the sprite to the theme that you want it to be, and it will automatically work it out. And you set the parent to be the actual object analog stick um, uh, object that I created uh, for the project. So if you have a look how this runs, I'll quickly show you guys some of the nice features. So as you can see, it's very smooth. Um, it has a lot of features. So the actual positioning of this is linear interpolated, which means that it will take a small delay for it to get to where it wants to go, but it produces a much nicer effect. Now this um, this player object here, as you can see, is getting a really nice smooth um, movement attached to him, and that's simply because he's using the linear interpolated normalized values coming out of the um, joystick. And the same for the rotation. You can see the rotation is also very smooth. I can't demonstrate multi-touch because I'm on my Windows PC right now, but you can see it's very smooth. Also, when you let go of the analog stick, it returns to the center position in a really nice, smooth way, so it looks very professional and high quality. Now, to demonstrate the dead zone, I'm just going to open up the analog stick, go back into our create event, and I'm going to add a dead zone of, say, 0 0.05. Now, depending on your game, you might want to adjust those dead zones. Um, it, it really depends on the project you're working on. But as you can see, now moving around in the center area, there is a very small area where it has no effect, which basically makes your, your movement. Um, you need to move the stick a little bit more to get it to move. And if we increase that dead zone further, so I'm going to increase that from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1, you'll see that that, z that dead zone area actually gets larger and larger. So now there's a larger area that the joysticks no longer work. But when you exceed, when you get past that area, the joystick will take effect. So this is useful for some sort of games like fighting games where you have to do large, um, large and big movements. Uh, it works on iOS and Android uh, and potentially HTML5. I haven't tested that yet because I don't have any devices capable of playing a HTML5 game uh, in multi-touch. Now, as you can see, we have the draw GUI, which basically draws on the GUI for us uh, and I think the last thing I wanted to talk about was how you implement actual movement so this is my test object and if you have a look in the step event what you'll see is we have x plus equals object left stick dot normal x now normal x and normal y they return a value between zero or sorry between negative one and positive one so it's either negative one or positive one for the x and that's zero is in the center so as you move the stick to the left it goes closer to, to um, negative one and as you move it to the right it goes closer to positive one and it's the same for y but up and down become negative zero and positive sorry negative one and positive one um, so this gives you a really easy way to simply uh, use those values and you can multiply them by whatever amount you like so if I were to multiply those values by say three you'll see that our hero will slow down I'm just gonna run the game again so you can see that 
There we go. So we've got a finer grade of control over the hero's movement. And you'll see the hero is moving really smoothly. They have a very nice stop to them. That's simply inherent because the actual virtual joysticks are using linear interpolation. And that allows them to have this really nice smooth uh, effect to them. The final thing is the right stick, which is doing the direction. Uh, I also expose a variable from these joysticks called normal dir, and that basically stands for normalized direction, which is a value between 0 and 365. And if I execute that again, what you'll see is our direction is working exactly the same. So thank you guys for watching. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter, check this out on the marketplace. Uh, it's not out today, but it will be out. I'll leave an annotation on the video when I've added some more features to this. Um, I just wanted to show you guys really how it was going and and how it, how it looks because this is actually, it runs at this speed on a phone. It's just in the last video of my webcam. Um, it only records at like 15 frames per second or something stupid like that. So it looked really choppy. So yeah, expect it to look very smooth and buttery on all devices, well, you know, all modern devices. Um, it also depends on what theme you're using. And yeah, all of these features, they including the dead zone, including uh, the linear interpolation will work of, with any sprite that you use. Uh, and I'll just quickly show you guys the theming options. So if I jump over here, I'm gonna use a shaded dark theme for the left stick. And if I run the game again, you should see a shaded dark theme. So there we go, it comes with some quite nice themes already built into the package. And I'll change one more theme just to show you guys how it looks. So if we go to the left stick, go to the sprites, and I'm going to use the, ooh, what should we use? Let's use the Lion Dark theme, just to show you guys what that uses. And like I said, this will work with any any system. So this is the Lion theme. It's just a very simple, um, these are very simple as well. But there's, I know, like I said before, there is an asset pack that you can pick up on the Unity Asset Store. Uh, it's not by me, it's by someone else. but. Um, those those sprites will plug straight into this and work um, perfectly so thank you guys for watching uh, check this out in the marketplace when it's out and i hope you enjoy this video uh, follow me on twitter subscribe to my youtube channel you can also check out my patreon page it's um, patreon.com slash rm2kdev um, if you want to go there and, and show support that way please feel free um, so yeah thank you guys for watching bye